Hey, Michael, can you hear me? Yes, can hear you. Yeah, that, that was a thumbs, thumbs up, so that's good. All right. Thanks for joining. I'll, I'll hand over to you now. Um, this is Jan van Epson from Materialize, and uh, Jan, across to you. Okay, good. I missed the introduction. I was waiting backstage, so I, I don't know what Michael uh, explained in general. I think he was uh, talking about the agenda. I'll be talking uh, today about how to accelerate the NPI process for medical and aerospace uh, based on our own and also my personal experience. I'll run you through some slides, also show a short video. It will take like 10, 15 minutes and then there is room for questions, of course. Good. Um, all right, so just materialize. I, you know materialize, so we are an, a reference in the market of 3D printing. We have three business units. We have the software business unit. We have the manufacturing business unit, which is more focused on industrial manufacturing, including aerospace. And then we also have the medical uh, business unit. Good. Uh, so I'm part of the software business unit. I've been working also in the medical business unit before. So not going too much in detail. These are numbers from uh, quite some years ago, but it gives an idea about what our numbers are. Uh, so we're like 2,300 people working on the three in the three business units, in, active in quite some countries. Um, yeah, we have quite a, a lot of coverage in the AM metal system manufacturers, right? Um, good. And just this gives a, a better idea on how we are globally present. So we have different production sites over the world. We also have different software development sites over the world. So we are able to cover our customers 24 seven even for uh, yeah all right not going through all the numbers again but as you can see we print quite some parts internally also so we're not only a software company 1.6 million in 2022 we have 120 industrial printers so not just desktop printers of which approximately 20 metal 3d printers and as i mentioned before uh, we have quite some good coverage in 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 worldwide market position good just talking as so talking about how to accelerate the npi process i will also also explain what the npi process means but most of you probably know that already starting from my own background i started in 2000 in the aerospace sector as an aerospace engineer then i moved to materialize in 2008 where i was responsible for our production management system uh, which was called streamix and also responsible for quite some um, uh, with our team we had a, a quite large team on consultancy where we helped aerospace and medical companies to set up their processes. And that was already in the year 2010. So in 2014, um, our team, we were responsible for setting up our titanium 3D printed production from scratch. So that was in 2014, where we, so with the focus to bring medical implants to the US market. Yeah, so that took quite, that took quite some effort, very intense. Um, a lot of testing, a lot of process iterations, a lot of validation, a lot of documentation. I will not take you through all the details, but that was quite a lot of work. And it was really nice. So in two, two years and a half, we achieved, as you can see here, we achieved our, uh, so we were released for the, um, for the US market. Uh, so as you can see here, so we were, um, yeah, we were approved to release to the US market to deliver implants medical implants so head implants really critical uh, titanium implants to the to the patients and we're happy to help all those customers good so that was in 2017 and in fact in 2020 i moved again back to the software business unit to work more on am industrialization based on my own experience so enough talking about me let's talk a bit about how this experience is in our experience experience of myself but also of the complete team has helped materialize and will help also our customers, especially in the airspace and medical sector, to focus more on traceability, efficiency, and quality. Good. So when we talk about the MPI process, uh, so MPI is a generic term which is used for new product uh, process introduction. Yeah. So that means moving into production. That's really the final goal. So the final goal is moving into production. That means a lot of validation but also uh, research. But I will talk about research a bit more now. Uh, what does it mean, the research phase? That means if the pr uh, product is feasible, that's the first thing. That means you have to find uh, some, you have to do experiments to first of all, see if it is technologically feasible or business feasible. For example, the implants that you can see, they're extremely thin. Before we start complete production flow, we need to first check if that is 
really technically feasible to print them that thin in a stable way. To understand the cause and effects uh, by playing with some parameter variations and combinations and also assessing, and that will become more and more important also through the rest of the slides, we have to assess the right ISPM technology. The ISPM is in situ process monitoring. That means all the data that you gather during the 3D printing process to control your quality. The message, eh, so I said, OK, I'll, I'll give some insights in how we achieved, uh, how we believe you can accelerate the NPI process is that it's not, I, if you, you should really make at a certain moment an economical decision, like, okay, do we want to fully understand the process or do we understand it like 95% and for the rest 5% control? Because otherwise it's an endless loop. And so that's what I call the pitfall of research. You should really try to move as quick as possible from research into the validation cycle. I don't mean that you don't have to understand the process, but there are certain limits, certain process variations which are extremely difficult or impossible to really fully understand. So that's where you have to take that decision to jump and to say, OK, let's do more control uh, on the process. So from research into validation, then typically it starts with an IQ and then an OQ. An OQ is operational qualification, where we uh, write and do, uh, so write SOPs, and their operating procedures, doing test protocols, defining operational ranges. And there you really, this is so, uh, such a critical phase, is that you have to prove here that you understand the AM process via different uh, controlled and uncontrolled parameter variations and do a lot of complex data analytics. So you really have to show that you have control over the OM, OM, AM process on the things that you do not understand completely. So that means building in enough quality control. So do, for this, you need to bring together six data sources. I'll also come back later on that one. And you need to uh, demonstrate that ISPM catches any uncontrolled key process variables. My recommendation here to accelerate the MP MPI process involve the production team as soon as possible, right? So typically have a research team, you typically have a validation team, maybe they, those are people uh, combined. But in the end, the people who are running production, you should involve them as soon as possible. Um, and a second very important recommendation is to have a very good AM process and data backbone system in place, not only in validation, but also in research. That all the experiments that you do, that you trace them. You don't just trace them on paper or in Excel, but you that you trace them in a very well uh, system, central system. Yeah. And as you can see here, so uh, we were we were benefiting from a system where we could just trace all the data very nicely into a system. We can also label our parts automatically so that there is no confusion which parts are there they are so as you can see here on a build uh, maybe there are 50 60 tensile bars with all different process parameters you don't want to mix up uh, tensile bars uh, that yeah that will that, that will then lead to wrong conclusions so that's we really benefit already from the backbone system and that helped us a lot so from validation then the next step is to production as you can see we do not do only medical we also do aerospace parts and uh, so i think there is a i why am I presenting more the medical case? Because there is a very strong relation to the airspace. The quality requirements are at the same level as in the airspace. Yeah. So quality monitoring, part quality monitoring, you need to assess on part inspections and link them with process data. So here, for example, you can see here my mouse, I suppose. Um, you can, so here are the tensile density, for example, and here are some blades from aerospace blades. You, in this phase of production, you limit the number of a test coupons, but you maximize the number of parts that you want to really print and deliver to your customer. But you still need to link the quality uh, results of the test coupons with every individual part. Of course, also some SPC analytics, production process monitoring, like I said before, and production quality control, ISPM data, quite some complex data that you have to assess. Um, I mentioned SPC already before. And this can also help you in preventive maintenance so that you have more machine uptime. This can, I, all the data, having them central, that then automatically creates all certification documents. So that production phase is really on the confidence. You should really focus on how can I bring confidence to myself and to my customers. Yeah. Good. So when we bring all that together, uh, so there is research validation production, but there is also that RCA, uh, root cause analysis. I think the RCA case really illustrates very well how what the complexities of AM in that full process and how 
things can be accelerated in the full NPI process. So you have a machine, you print, uh, for example, in our case, these are is a production build with quite some monitoring parts on it, tensile bars on it. So you do quite some checks. We do much more checks internally, but I didn't want to overload the full slide. Visual density, everything goes well, but at a certain moment, tensile goes out of spec. And that means you have to scrap a build. You cannot just restart the same build. Um, you really need to uh, scrap it because it means your process is out of control. Then the investigation starts looking into job parameter set points. And I'm talking 2014. So we did that on paper. Uh, we did log files in uh, TXT files that we assessed from folders, layer images, manual review, 8,000 layer images on a build, laser power measurements traced on paper. Uh, I, I'm talking 2014 now. Yeah, Now we do it differently. Powder samples traced on paper, made transactions. So in all those, so it you really bring a team together that needs to investigate the root cause. Takes quite some time. And finally, we found out that in some paperwork, so maintenance action was traced just before the build, a filter unit was replaced. Luckily, we traced that one. It's not just luckily, but it was a risk assessment that we had to trace that. So the filter unit was replaced. It, it apparently had some leakage that caused a higher oxygen level that we could see in the log files uh, that caused a higher, chemical, uh, higher oxygen level in the process chamber. From the test coupons that we got back, that also showed a higher oxygen level, and that higher oxygen level caused a higher tensile a lower tensile specification. So all of that, you can laugh or joke about it, but it took us two weeks. Yeah? So uh, we, a few days of investigation, one week of investigation to really be sure, and then week of demonstrating that this was really the root cause. Yeah? We're running really production now. So what, what our goal, and again, that's also one of the reasons why I moved from the medical production back to the software, because I, I think, we should be able to move that two weeks lost production time and not just production time but also people and eh, lost resources we should move that to one hour or even avoid if you monitor it even better yeah and that <clears throat> i did summarize here at the bottom we really learned a few times it was not just once that the really the economic value of actionable data if you want to accelerate your mpi process you need to have actionable data. That means not data on paper or Excel, but really data that you can jump and do real-time analytics on, right? And that's, so we, I, our current our system at that moment was based on Excel and paperwork. Um, we did the assessment for a new ideal system. Uh, as you can see, these were the points that came out of that one together with our aerospace colleagues from Materialize. And so again, actionable data is the most, most important. And since three, four years, we are we have developed that system in-house first of all because we test all our software in-house we run it always first in-house and so the rollout is ongoing and you can see here the numbers they're they're ambitious but we really believe that that is a key thing yeah. what we also learned and again sharing our own experience it's so important to in, invest in future proof am specific systems from the start uh, Every year that you delay it, every month that you delay it, it just triples 10 times. You lose time afterwards with that one. So don't think, let's do just first research and validation. No. And then invest into those uh, systems. No, you should really do that from the start. And that's really a personal le lesson, I can tell you. OK. And again, we have quite some experience. Eh? Like we have 120 machines running in-house, 20 metals. So we have quite some experience in that one. Good. Um, so again, this uh, how the complexity of uh, linking all those data sources together, and it's not listing all of them, uh, all that manual data source before. So what we did is we created one central system where we correlate all those six data sources together. And so the QPC system that we made, it's also nicely integrated into our full coin suite. Good. Talking about data source, that's one thing, but also about connecting people. So we do not only connect data source in our internal production, but we also connect people, having the research people talking with the quality engineer through one system, machine operators. Yeah. So that's really one of the key aspects, not only the data source, but also the people. And the AI analytics, that's so powerful. Uh, AI, I was conservative on it a few years ago, but it really is such a big asset uh, to have that AI uh, in our QPC system. Good. Just showing you um, 
a, a short, it's a two, three minute video. It gives insight in how we run our production. Yeah, so um, it's, uh, it's not just a marketing video. Uh, so I talked about those six data sources, how we, how those are, how we structured our data into that one and how it's important to not only have a system for production, but also research and validation and through cross analysis. So when we talk about research, uh, so this is a, so you need that flexibility. That's what we have in house that the research can play with their own parameters that they can set their own fields and, and all that kind of stuff. As you can see here, laser power, but also tensile properties. People can fill in scan speeds, play with laser power, trace that in the in, in a single system, and have it also printed on the parts. <clears throat> now in the validation stage, uh, let's focus here a bit on more the test coupons. That's so we have also an in-house lab. That is a, a video of our in-house lab. So we bring in, we just import the data from our tensile bench into the system and we immediately link it with the identifiers of the parts. And then when we go into production, then we focus more uh, less on test coupons, but more on the parts itself. Uh, we need to control, of course, what's happening in the machine. So tracing, laser power, lenses, anything. So it's a fully configurable system that we use in-house. That helps us in really moving on with MPI. For example, so recoder or filter replacements, we can trace that into the system. Powder batch replacements, so critical for your uh, material properties and part quality. Yeah, so we, we can also centralize that in our system and link it with every part. And then the second thing is that those dashboards. How can we have a quick, as yeah, so more for the production people, less for research and validation, but for production people having an overview of their machine park, diving, if there is something wrong, you can see here the level of laser power, build chamber, that somebody can really start quickly do uh, troubleshooting. And when we do the root cause analysis, and yeah, again, in this case, we, we just show after a build that when we have layer images or optical tomography or any kind of other data, operators can just have a real-time look through the data and the system, the AI system will automatically detect defects and will quantify it. So that also helps us in maintaining a stable production also in our validation stage. Yeah. Good. And when we bring all that data together, again, like I said in the beginning, it's all about centralizing data. You enter, we can enter a build ID into the system. It looks up all the data, layer analysis, uh, process data, but also lab test data. So that's I, that's really what made for us a difference on how we can move faster and faster into our production. Good. So, yeah, summarizing, yeah, so lessons learned for us, making MPI, how can we make it faster? How can you make it faster? Again, focus on production introduction. So don't do a too much, too long research phase pitfall. Yeah, so involve the production team very early in the process very important also because they have the right spirit and uh, that you don't over uh, do things uh, in yeah in production that is not economical have have the possibility to have actionable data yeah have a way that your day all the data that you trace the terabytes of data that you can trace them in an actionable way that you can work immediately on it and also invest into future proof am uh, specific pros and data backbone systems do that as soon as you can, you will not regret it. I will tell you that. Okay, good. I think that was my presentation. So um, yeah, any feedback, always welcome. Any questions in the chat, let me know. Thank you very much. Yeah, and really interesting. And um, great to hear, you know, Materialize has, I suppose, the, the largest collection of metal AM systems um, in Northern Europe, hearing some of the lessons you've learned from such a uh, uh, fantastic operation there. Um, you mentioned a couple of times about this future-proof um, AM-specific systems. Perhaps you could elaborate a little bit on what you mean by that. Yeah, so indeed. Uh, so the, the first thing here, uh, when you talk about that specific, we did the assessment. So we are a software company, so we like developing software, but we also don't like making software that already exists in the market so we always when we when we have an issue in our own production that's where it typically starts from we assess if there is software available in the market a generic software but we see and that's also what we hear from our aerospace medical but also other customers that am there is 
really a specific there are really a few specific things that makes makes am so unique that it's worth investing in an am specific system it needs to work into a bigger system a more generic system but the complexity of am is in that way that you really need an am specific system yeah mm -hmm. um the the next word is that future proof yeah so there i, I on that one we don't don't just for, uh, for example if you have one type of machines you can say okay let's make a system only for that type of machines but you know uh, your goal is always to grow so typically you will expand into other types of machine other bands of machine that's also what we mean with future proof have a future view also ensure that the system is independent of any machine type or machine brand that's also what we mean with future proof can it handle hundreds of machines we have customers running hundreds of metal machines uh, so we are not the biggest in the world Michael, uh, in europe uh, so we have they really really run hundreds of machines metal machines on a single side is the system scalable that's also what you have to look at yeah that's i i hope that is answering your question yeah, that's great we've got a got another one here um so are you providing support for supplier um inputs into the software so i think here is how is talking about post-processing, final machining, finishing, the other sort of parts of that value chain. How can people integrate um, that value chain with your software? Yeah, so if I understand it correctly, so the, the non-AM part of that one, yeah, so indeed, or uh, so we, the CoEM system also ex extends beyond AM, yeah, so we can also handle post-processing. And from my own experience, I know how critical it is to also cover the non-AM part. For example, heat treatments, cleaning, but also CNC machining, and also the quality control of those aspects, they need to be in that central system. So yes, mm -hmm. we also, yeah, that's also from our own experience. And that's, we also, or we enter it, we can enter it into our system, or we can integrate it into, uh, in, we can integrate with ex external systems. Excellent, I hope that uh, answers the question. Right, so we have, um, Slightly uh, lesser known material class and lesser used material class in polymers and metals, but um, do you have a perspective of on applications using materials such as ceramics? All right, I found the question and answer <laughs> chat box also. So, okay, good. Uh, no, no, good. That that helps. Uh, um, so indeed. So again, referring to the future proof. So the focus of our system, and again, uh, so we. We started from the medical side, the metal. We focus the system to this, to really handle that complexity of AM and that high value chain, because we believe the market is more asking for that one. But the system is also, in the same way, usable for plastics or even ceramics. So to give you an example, the roller at Materialize will also use it in our own SLS production for aerospace, for example. Yeah, but. Uh, we have to make a choice when we make slides and a message but indeed it's a very good question so it's not only limited to metal it's a future proof technology mm -hmm. independent brand independent system yeah. yeah and indeed in aerospace uh, ceramics will have a uh, growing role no doubt in uh, hypersonic programs for example um jan thank you so much for your uh, your time today i hope you can um stay for a bit at the event uh, there'll be networking and chances to um, ask questions to jan um, if he's around and um, thank you again. So um, yes, <laughs> it's strange not having a live audience, but hit some claps. <laughs> uh, thank you, Michael. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you everybody for listening. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. All right. Bye. Okay. On to the next session.